Hello, this is Nicholas G, Senior Technical Engineer at Business Continuity. What follows is a technical overview and demonstration of Hyper-V virtual machine protection using double take availability. The image on the screen shows two Hyper-V host servers, each hosting one virtual machine and shows double take replication protecting each virtual machine by creating a replica on the alternate Hyper-V host. The primary management interface of double take availability is the double take console. As you can see we're here on the home screen and if you look um, at the under the headlines window we can see we're not monitoring any servers currently. We can add servers to the console either manually by manually typing the name, username and password or by automatic discovery. Once discovered we can add the machines to the console provide credentials for any servers that require additional credentials providing. We can also choose to import servers from a file. The Manage Servers screen shows us all double take servers that have been discovered in the environment. As we can see we have uh, 10 servers listed, 2 of the servers are actually currently offline. We get to see the server name, the current status of the activity the server may be doing, the current version of double take installed, the licensed versions of double take installed and any activation codes used. The Manage Servers tab allows us to look at more detail on each of the Hyper-V nodes. Double clicking on a node will bring up the properties for that host. Again we can see the uh, double take license is used, the version of double take used and the port that this node is being managed on. We can have direct access to the Windows Event Viewer to view double take related events clicking on the view events on this server tab. You can see the Windows event log has been filtered by default for just double take related events. The monitor connections window shows us all current connections in the enterprise. We're now going to take a look at Hyper-V Manager. Hyper-V Manager is the simple administration tool provided for free to manage Hyper-V virtual machines. As you can see, I've got a number of Hyper-V nodes listed. Uh, the ones we are actually interested in is Hyper-V Node 7 and Hyper-V Node 8. On Hyper-V Node 7, I currently have a server named Server 1 that is currently running. I'm going to just connect to this node you can see on the right hand side of the screen I'm now connected to, to server 1 running on Hyper-V node 7. I'm going to do the same with server 2. I'm now connected to both virtual machines. Hyper-V Manager also allows us to shut down virtual machines, save them, pause them, reset them, take snapshots of them um, and add components to the virtual machines. I'm now going to return to the double take console. Using the monitor connections tab you can see I currently have one protection job running. I'm protecting server 2 from node 8 to node 7. I'm now going to configure a second protection job protecting server 1 from node 7 to node 8. 
So I hit the get started button, choose double take availability, choose to protect a Hyper-V virtual machine using host level protection, choose the host that has got the server I wish to protect. You can now see the, the list of servers that are currently on the host that I've connected to. I select server one. Select the Hyper-V server that will host the replica virtual machine. I'm already on node seven, so I'm gonna choose node eight. Hit the next button. I now get prompted to choose a location to store the replica virtual machine. I'm going to choose the H drive, which is the largest disk. I'm going to just select the folder, the default being DTHV underscore replicas. And I get prompted to provide a, a name for the virtual machine replica. I'm going to accept the default, which is the source server name underscore replica. I then get the opportunity to map network accordingly. I have a number of network cards on these Hyper-V nodes, so I'm just going to match them up identically. I now get the option to choose a network IP address to route replicated traffic through. This is particularly useful if you wish to keep your replicating traffic away from your production network. In this case, I only have one IP address, so I will accept the default. I also get an option to enable compression on the replicating traffic. Double Take provides three levels of compression, low, medium, and high. Over a local network with high bandwidth, it's usual to leave this set to none. I also have an option to limit the maximum bandwidth that Double Take will use for replicating. Again, over a local area network, it's typical to leave this blank. Double Take availability provides an automatic failover mechanism that can be enabled. The default period for a failover condition to be met is 25 seconds. That is showing an interval, a monitoring interval of five seconds and five missed intervals being before a failover condition is met. It is good practice to change this monitoring interval so that we can allow for outages such as server reboots, etc. I'm just going to make that change now. I'm going to change my monitoring interval to six seconds and I'm going to change my number of missed intervals to 50. It still gives us a five minute window before a failover condition has been met. Protection summary just gives us a quick overview of the options we've selected. If we're happy with our selections, we can click finish. Okay, we can now see the double take connection being created. I'll leave server one replicating to node eight and turn our attention to server two, which is already configured for protection to node number seven. I'm just gonna bring up the uh, Hyper-V manager. I'm gonna bring up two instances of Hyper-V manager so we can observe the virtual machines currently running on Hyper-V node seven and on Hyper-V node eight. As you can see, server one is on node seven, server two is on node number eight. I'm also going to bring up a continuous ping server two, so we'll be able to see the uh, duration it takes to come back online.